Hello everyone, Mr. Happy here, and in this video, just wanted to share with you all my thoughts on some of the details that came out of Gamescom last weekend about Final Fantasy XIV. Now, there were a lot of interviews, and some of them we talked about on State of the Realm this past week, so hopefully you watch this week's episode. However, several new interviews have come out, and I've got three right here with some overlapping details that I won't go into all too much. Some story-related stuff, more astrologian balances. Uh, they're not actually saying what they are, so you just need to know they're looking at them. So, uh, we're actually going to look at Dual Shockers, Game Watch, and PC Games N. That's what we are going to be looking at. I'll be sure to include a link to all three of the actual uh, interviews for Dual Shockers. It was a uh, it was an audio interview. It was a video interview. So I just decided to uh, take some notes on it before the video. Just a few quick questions. Just six quick questions they had for uh, Naoki Yoshida. So let's start with the Dual Shockers one. Uh, some of these, like I said, will overlap with the other two. Uh, when we get to that, I'll just make mention that it's overlapping. So uh, Dual Sharkers had a total of six questions, and the first one was about the 24-man raid. Now, uh, there's actually some details about this that come out of PC Games N that are a little bit interesting to, uh, to hear about. But basically, just know patch 3.1. 24-man raid is coming up, story is completely unique to Final Fantasy XIV, and you could probably find some hints about it in the skies of the expansion as is, uh, perhaps an airship of sorts. Well, they asked him, uh, the airship? And he's just like, eh, I can't say anything. And so, just kind of have to wait for the 14-hour broadcast next weekend before we'll really find anything else out about that. Uh, he also said there's a lot more uh, detail to the new 24-man raid, so please look forward to it. Uh, also, uh, in terms of Xbox One negotiations, still having issues with the cross-platform play between Sony consoles, so still ongoing. I mean, until Microsoft lets off with that whole cross-platform thing and they accept the fact that unless they, you know, accept the Sony consoles, it's probably never going to happen. That's probably going to be a pretty rough time for them. Uh, next thing, so add-ons. It's been a while. Actually, it's been forever because we still don't have these and every time we hear about them, it's like, yeah, we took another step forward, we took another step forward, maybe soon, maybe soon. Uh, so... Apparently, they outright stopped them for a while while they developed the user interface for the expansion. Now that the expansion is done and launched and there's not as much UI work that needs to be done, they are redevoting resources to getting the add-ons out. They really want to get it out in the 3.x series. The user-created add-ons has not been completely iceboxed. However, be sure to stay on them about it because uh, they need to be reminded that people want this. I mean, I understand there's some... Uh, controversy about, you know, of course, the console players not having access to these resources, but hey, you never know, maybe PS4 will somehow get access to these resources in the future. If it, if it can happen for Fallout 4, come on, it can happen for Final Fantasy 14. I know that's, it's not that easy, but I'd like to believe it could. Uh, so next thing, flying in a Roman born areas. We've heard this a million times. They'd have to redesign the zones. I mean, there's nothing new happening here. I thought it was pretty interesting, though. They mentioned that the new zones going forward will have flying. So the 4.0 expansion will have flying. That's just what I take away from it. And also mention that if they were going to redesign the old areas to include flying, they wouldn't just add resources to the areas that because you know how not everything is fully rendered because it's not in view of the player. Uh, they would actually make sure there are activities to do and reasons to have flying in that zone. They just wouldn't want to flat out add flying without adding some sort of reason to have flying outside of faster travel considering the size of the zones. Uh, also, the team is considering uh, another feature that's sort of like Path Companions. Uh, I don't know if this is something to do with the Grand Company feature that we'll be talking about in one of the other interviews, but uh, they have the groundwork set. I mean, they have the AI from the Chocobos, but they would want it to be a little bit smarter, <laughs> to say the least. I think we all want it to be a little bit smarter when it comes to the Chocobos as is. Um, so they would need a, a better AI, kind of, to make it really feel like that is your path companion back from 1.0. Uh, for those who don't know, that's what it was. It was a companion that you ventured through the main story with, for the most part. Uh, and it, the, that path companion just disappeared at some point, and we haven't heard from them since. So maybe something along that lines in the future, but they may be looking to implement that more along the lines of this grand company feature that we're going to be talking about in one of the other interviews. And, of course, Nintendo NX also came up. At this point, we're almost expecting Nintendo NX to get Final Fantasy XIV before the Xbox One gets it. They said they need to talk to Nintendo about cross-platform play, see what their policies are on it. And, you know, you never know. Maybe if uh, both the companies can agree to something, we will see Final Fantasy XIV on Nintendo NX. The main reason people are looking forward to it is because Dragon Quest X, online game in Japan, may likely, well, may come out on the Nintendo NX as well. 
So if it can happen there, hopefully it can happen with Final Fantasy XIV. Although, because it is a global game, it may have some issues with the cross-platform play with Nintendo's policies. We don't know. But that was what came out of the DualShockers interview. It was a great interview. Uh, interviewer definitely put Yoshida on the spot about Moogle Quest. Every single one of these interviews has questions about the Moogle Quest. And it was hilarious. Because this was a video interview for DualShockers, when they asked him about the Moogle Quest, Yoshiki just went, <laughs> No, I'm tired of hearing about these quests. We know, we know that they were not good, okay? We know now. Alright, so PC Games N. That is going to be the next interview we look at. Yeah, okay, just making sure you can see all of the text right here. Now, this interview wasn't in a classic Q&A format, so it was kind of, uh, it, was, it was a little bit more tedious to read through. There's some stuff about Yoshi P talking about appealing to the nostalgia of Final Fantasy fans and making sure the story is good, making sure the characters are good, uh, talking about feedback. Uh, there's a lot of that here, and as you can see, it's all just basically quotes, you know, how to appeal to multiple generations of Final Fantasy fans. And now, there's a quote here about the 24-man raid. I don't know if this was taken out of context, um, because it's very strange the way that they, uh, that they talked about it. So, right here it is. A new 24-person raid of the same size of the Crystal Tower will be added in 3.1. Okay, we knew that. It's not like a normal raid. You use airships and you can visit floating islands and explore them once you land. Anyone can join in as long as you don't exceed the 24-person limit. That almost makes it seem like the free company airship feature is the 24-man raid. Now, with the previous hint that that airship in the sky had something to do with it, it's not completely unreasonable that it is going to be something in the sea of clouds in the first place. However, I don't know if... I, I don't know because then this is a little bit different because then in the Game Watch interview, there's another quote about the whole free company airship exploration thing that makes it seem separate from this. So this may have just been a rough translation, may not have gone quite the way they wanted to. I wouldn't take this verbatim yet. We're going to have to really wait on the solid details on the 24-man raid. I mean, I kind of want the free company airship stuff to be things that are larger scale. I don't want them to be like four or eight-man content. I want them to be a free company airship uh feature and of course with the with the mercenary feature you know you don't have to be in a free company in order to join in like they said you just can't exceed a 24 person limit um i'm wondering if that 24 person limit is going to be enforced for the free company airships if so it actually should make for at least giving larger free companies some more stuff to do together which i think is good i'm just worried about the exclusion of the smaller free companies but we'll see what they mean by this maybe they just mean that the new um the new raid will be more of, a, of an open exploration thing, not so much of a linear path. Kind of, I guess, more like Labyrinth of the Ancients, where you have multiple goals that need to be fulfilled, but you can do them in the order that works best. Everyone always goes Bone Dragon to the other one, to the, the other one anyway. But uh, regardless, I'm interested to see what this ends up really meaning. The other thing here is the Grand Company Platoon feature. We're working on something for Grand Companies which allow you to hire NPCs to your army, which is a new element that we think will expand your options. They've been talking about this for some time where you hire these NPCs and you go into the low-level dungeons with them and you power them up. Their AI is supposed to be smart enough to complete these lower-level dungeons or at least whatever instances are taking place in these lower-level dungeons. And uh, then uh, it's something that, you know, you're creating an army, you're building an army. And considering that eventually the conflict with Garlemald will be a thing, it almost makes sense to have a feature like this, uh, the Grand Company Platoon feature. So I'm interested to see what the implementation is like. I guess that it's ultimately their way of being like, well, we can't get the Chocobos in there, so how do we... Oh, I got it. Let's make a completely new feature built from the ground up, and then we'll implement that with the Chocobos. They have said they... I think they found a, a workaround for the Chocobo thing. I'd have to find the source for it, but uh, <laughs> we'll have the Platoons at the very least. And then, uh, then it's him just going to talking about, you know, making sure they have features that appeal to, uh, appease the, the current players because they feel like if the current players are enjoying the game, that will bring new players into the game as opposed to simply creating features for new players. Uh, there's also talk about free-to-play versus, uh, versus subscription models. Yoshi P is so tired of talking about this. He just says as long as the game is fun, it shouldn't matter whether it's free or not. It's all about how enjoyable or worthwhile the game is. Um... But he seems to, they still seem to be erring on the side of a monthly subscription, uh, mostly probably for the same reasons as before. Free to play, not as consistent uh, in terms of how much money 
it pulls in uh, makes it harder to develop content on a more consistent basis i'm sure that they could find a way around that but regardless um they also seem to like it because when a game is free to play you tend to get a lot of younger people who come in and misbehave and they ruin the experience for the people who have been there so uh that seems to be another reason they they appreciate that a lot of final fantasy players are of an older generation and are generally more well behaved uh something i actually appreciate as well definitely uh you can tell, you know, whenever you run into the Sour Apple, generally the older fans, you know, myself included, people have been fans for almost all our lives. Um, we don't like it as much, like we don't appreciate that kind of attitude. So it is what it is. Subscription model. That's like it's been said a million times already. It's, it's a subscription model game. <laughs> And then we have the Game Watch interview here at the end. Now, I know the text is a little bit smaller here, but if I enlarge it anymore, it kind of throws off this whole uh, the whole video. So I'm just going to leave it as is. There's a lot of stuff here that also came from the, uh, that's similar to the interview with Famitsu, talking about balance adjustments for Astrologian. How did the launch of the expansion go? The Moogle quests suck. Yes, we know. Talking about Savage Alexander a little bit more. Uh, for those who missed it in the Famitsu interview, they said that the group that the first group that beat it beat it a few days earlier than expected, which was nice because it wasn't like it wasn't like weeks ahead of time like it was with Final Coil. Uh, so he just goes ahead and compliments the groups that cleared it on the second week, uh, the groups that cleared it really early at the very least, and uh, just the way they kind of go into developing the content. Lowering the barrier of entry, talking about the normal difficulty and how it's meant for everyone to see the story. I'm surprised the interviewer didn't kind of bring up that people were a little bit iffy. Like, they're 50-50. Like, some people really enjoy, they can enjoy the story. Some people wish there was a slightly harder difficulty below Savage. Um, but that's something I'm sure Yoshi P is dealing with on other fronts. So, I guess this interview didn't, the interviewer didn't feel the need to do it. Especially because apparently somebody... Oh, and also, I like this. He called him Faust Sensei in the interview. I thought that was funny that, uh, is this Slicer? That, yeah, Slicer uh, brought this up. <laughs> I thought that was pretty funny. Um, all right, so he's just talking about Alexander Savage. Uh, any adjustments for jobs other than Astral Oceans? They say they might increase the enmity on tanks because apparently even in the same item level, they feel like DPS might be pulling too much aggro. I don't know that that's really a problem. I, I, I don't think that's a problem at all, personally, but... Uh, with the item level difference, it makes sense, but with the same item level, uh, I, don't, I don't think that's right. So, they may bump enmity generation a bit, but they're still monitoring that, so that's not set in stone. Um, also, uh, just talking about how a lot more people have decided to try Savage. You know, that uh, this Savage has at least... There's more people attempting this than there were Second Coil. Ultimately, what they're trying to say. Um, second Coil Savage, to be clear. Also talking about adding more value to certain 2.0 content that they're looking to do it in 3.1, maybe a little bit later. They talk about 3. Point now, this was pretty interesting. Now, we know there's going to be an update to the Gold Saucer with a brand new attraction, but they also said there's going to be new stuff for Chocobo Racing and Triple Triad. So, we may have new courses for uh, Chocobo Racing coming. We probably know there's another 20 cards coming for Triple Triad. They mentioned this probably like four or five months ago, at least, maybe even farther back. Um, so, also increasing payout of MGP uh, and allow players to buy multiple weekly lottery tickets multiple weekly so i can lose the jumbo cackpot three times a week now fantastic that's gonna be interesting uh curious i'm sure they're gonna go up in cost every time so that's <laughs> i wonder if that's gonna end up really paying off there's gonna be a lot of gold saucer attention in 3.1 um also we got confirmation there are not going to be three new dungeons every patch from now and there's gonna be two new dungeons in every patch and here's where he mentions the sky island exploration we're also working on implementing a totally new playstyle called Sky Island Exploration, which is unlike anything we've had before. So I'm assuming that that is the airship flying the island to island thing, the free company airship, not the 24-man raid. Like, this makes it seem like it's completely different from the 24-man raid. Maybe it has a 24-man limit, but uh, I don't know. I'm still of the opinion that the new 24-man raid will not have anything to do with the free company airship, just that the free company airship may have a 24-player limit on it as well. Um, and also, like I said, instead of three new dungeons, two new dungeons. Now, for the love of God, Square Enix, if you're, especially if you're only going to do two dungeons a patch from now on, so that way you can take those resources and develop other content. I think that's the right thing to do. Put these two dungeons in the Expert Roulette. Don't take Never Reap and Fractal Continuum out of the Expert. Leave them in. Just add dungeons to the Expert Roulette and be done with it. Don't make it so we only have two dungeons for three months at a time i'm begging you right now please somebody else speak up about this because no way i'm dealing with <laughs> two dungeons and every expert roulette every three months it's not happening please people spread the word we've been complaining about it since before anyway uh new type of content in every patch uh they're just asking about new stuff they said they're adding now i thought this was interesting we're planning to add a bunch of content in the 3.x series that's unlike what we've had before good 
because 3.0 definitely followed the Realm Reborn formula. Let's see where they go from 3.1 and on. Uh, the formula is changing slightly with the dungeons, but we still have the 8-man, 24-man, 8-man, 24-man. Let's see what the Free Company airship takes us, where the more, uh, where the Gold Saucer-related stuff goes. They also mentioned, I don't know if it's in this interview or if it's in the other one, where they said they'd like to have um a new gold saucer attraction every other patch i don't see it in this one so it might be uh it might have been in the famitsu interview uh from the other day also uh some new features the grand company platoon we mentioned before also a content using magitech armor which is interesting uh said that some things from previous updates will lead into it so they've already made allowance for it you might see some if you pay careful attention this uh slicer says he references some sort of specific area in ishgard theological school or something uh Regardless, uh, some sort of Magitek armor content. And they've been talking about this since 2.0 as well. So, curious to see what that ends up leading into. Are there going to be story tie-ins? Are there going to be more delivery Moogle quests? Yes. More Hildebrand quests? Yeah. Um, are we going to are we gonna have any letters sent to the nodes in Asus Law? Um, they might look to include certain things with uh, academies. Like, for example, Final Fantasy VIII's uh, Seed Academy. Uh, they might have a Final Fantasy XIV Academy. Something with uh, Hildebrand and them. Something, uh, and Slicer says he wonders if this is some kind of training hall, uh, but that's more of a, that's not an actual translation, it seems to be just like a personal insert of opinion. Um, now this was interesting, so they've been publishing short stories for Tales of the Dragon Song War on the Lodestone, if you haven't been reading them, check them out. And there's mention here that they may eventually do a novel for Final Fantasy XIV, it's completely early and they're not saying it's definite, but apparently he was having drinks with uh, Yasumi Matsuno, who's one of their game designers, does a lot of the side quests, uh, writes a lot of the side quests, and they discussed that if they, uh, they may do some sort of Final Fantasy XIV novel about some, I guess maybe side event, something that's not really so integral to the story, but it's an interesting side story to Final Fantasy XIV. Uh, so, they said they may do that, they would have to make sure that it would be something people enjoy, that people would actually buy. But, uh, other than that, uh, it, it almost seems kind of wrong, because they were talking about game-related things, charging for game-related things like that. Um, which is fine, I would buy a book. I don't even read, but I would probably end up buying a book for Final Fantasy XIV. <laughs> Just so I wouldn't be out of the loop, I guess. Um, so, anything else here? Uh, there's talk about the community radio, and just a quick message for the fans out in Japan. So, there's a lot of information coming out here, a lot of the same questions, like I said, overlapping, but regardless, they were interesting things to read. I highly recommend uh, the things I glossed over, that if you're interested in them, that you go back, read them. If they're something you're interested in, they are actually a pretty good read, especially the PC Gamers one, where he talks about design philosophy and developing original content and whatnot. Spoken about it a lot before, but these were three pretty good interviews. There may still be more coming. I think Nova Chrysalis said they were going to post one sometime later in the week. Maybe that'll be later today. I don't know. But anyway, thank you for watching this video. Be sure to like, favorite, subscribe, and share to stay up to date on all the latest Final Fantasy XIV news. Don't forget, next Saturday, August 22nd, 14-hour live broadcast for Final Fantasy XIV to celebrate the two-year anniversary of A Realm Reborn. And there will be a live letter for that. We're hoping to pull out some more information about the 24-man raid and other contents of 3.1. Considering it is part one of a two-part Final Fantasy XIV uh, patch 3.1 live letter. Anyway, again, thank you for watching. I'll see you all in the next video. Until then, take care.